Amorbach is a small town near the place where modern-day Bavaria, Hesse and Baden-Württemberg all meet. In 1272, it became part of the Archbishopric of Mainz and remained so until 1803. This was the steward's office, now the local museum. Nearby, the tithe barn. A tithe was one-tenth of the local agricultural produce paid as a kind of tax. This is Germany's second oldest surviving timber-framed house. It dates from about 1291. It's called the Templar's House, but whether it actually had anything to do with the Knights Templar is not certain. This column, portraying Mary as the Daughter of Peace, was erected in the 17th century after French troops on their way to battle passed through and spared the town. While we were there, the local Lions Club was celebrating its anniversary and had invited some special guests from Kyrgyzstan. Amorbach began life as a settlement next to an 8th century Benedictine monastery. Its main purpose was not exactly worship, but to develop and Christianize the sparsely populated Ordenwald. It remained a monastery for over a thousand years until history caught up with it. At the end of the 18th century, France gained control over areas of the Holy Roman Empire west of the Rhine, leaving many German rulers with nothing left to rule. Almost the final act of the Holy Roman Empire was to turn lands owned by the church over to secular rulers. The Archbishopric of Mainz was finished, and so the Prince of Leiningen, who had lost his land in the Palatinate, was given a new Principality of Leiningen to rule over, with the former monastery his summer residence. His son married a certain Princess Victoria of saxe coburg saalfeld but he died, leaving her a widow. She later married Edward, Duke of Kent, and for a while they lived in this house next to the church before leaving for England, where she gave birth to a girl who would grow up to become Queen Victoria of Great Britain. The church is dedicated to St Gangolfus of Burgundy. He was killed by his wife's lover, a priest. On being told that miracles were happening at his graveside, she answered that Gangulfus performed miracles as much as her backside sang. For the rest of her life, every Friday, she suffered terrible flatulence. St Gangulfus is the patron saint of, of course, unhappily married husbands, but also of horses and those who ride them, since he himself was a noble horseman. And so, on the second Sunday in May, there's a parade.
This tradition may have started as early as the year 880. There was a brief pause during the Peasants' Revolt and then a much longer break from 1848 until 1948. Impatience, though, cost this horse the chance to take part this year while his owners tried to sort out the mess he'd made of his bridle. <laughs> 